good morning students good morning to all so on last day we have studied about the market structure and the pricing so what are the markets are there and the structure of the market and how the pricing and the commodities in this market are going to fix it so today also just we will remain what we have studied on last day and we will go to the next concept the market structure and the pricing so normally we will think the meaning of market so the word the market in normally we will say it refers to a physical place where the commodities and the services are bought and sold but in the economy the term market refers to a system of exchange between the buyers and the sellers of a commodity in the economy the market refers to a system of exchange so between the buyers and the sellers so without mentioning any of the physical place if there is the function exchange function is going on between the buyers and the seller so it is considered as a market so now the share market and the online market e market different type of the markets also is there so and the features of market so the buyer and the sellers of a commodity are a service so if you are considered so the market function is going on mean so the buyers and the seller of a commodity are a services must be existing so next a commodity to be bought and sold so here are in a market the commodity must be bought and sold so next the price agreeable to buyer and the seller if the commodity is going to sales the price is going to fixed by the buyer or the seller but it will be the agreeable to the both the buyer and the seller next direct and indirect exchange so normally if some of the market the commodity that the exchange functions will be happen as directly sometimes it will be indirectly so in this online market and so many of the markets are there so here the exchange activities will be functioning as indirectly so next we have studied the classification of market so we can classify the market on the basis of areas four types the local market so in this local market the product is going to produce within the boundaries or within the particular place and the product produced product also will be going to sell within the same areas for example the vegetables in these rural areas some of the rural vegetables and the fruits are going to cultivate within the rural and the market is also will be available the produced commodities will be going to sell within the same place among the producers next the provincial market provincial market mean the regional market the regional market mean some of the product will be produced in any of the places but in the sales will be happens or the produced product will be come to or will be happen within the particular region only for best example is the newspaper so some of the newspaper is going to sell but all the newses will be happen what was happened in the same district only so next is the national market so the national market mean some of the product is going to produced within the boundaries of geographical or the geographical boundaries are the political boundaries within one nations if any of the product is going to produced and the product is consumed by the same nation itself is considered as a national market next international market so here the product produced is going to consumed by the another one of the nations so product will be happen within the one nations and the sales of that commodities will be happen beyond the particular boundaries and the another nations also is considered international market so next on the basis of time so on the basis of time also we have classified the market so on the basis of time means here the time is refers to the nature of the factors so nature of the factor means such as the variable factor and the fixed factor we have studied you know four factors so land labor capital organizations 
so here the land and the organizations may be considered as a fixed factor so labor and capital may be considered as a variable factors the two factor can easily change it will be variable within the short period or the long period or very short period okay but the fixed variable fixed factor will never change it within the particular period okay so on the basis of the nature of factor only here the time is going to consider okay so now the very short period market so very short period market mean for example the weekly market so the supply of the commodities will not be extend within the particular period by using or by changing the any of the factor the variable factor and the fixed factor so next is short period market so in here some of the supply of commodities will be extend slightly by using the variable factor only so next long period market so here we can extend the supply of commodities on the basis of increased demand for the commodities by you by changing the four type of the factors the variable factors and the label factors next very long period so the very long period will be occurs when the entire economy undergoes a drastic change if our society is going to become as a drastic change so new type of the technologies are introduced and most modern products are produced so several newer methods of productions are adopted in the production process so totally on the taste and the preference of the consumers itself will be changed so all over the factors has to be changed on the basis of the secular reasons so for example the arrival of the pen drive has driven out the compact disc cd and dvd players so next newly so we will study it on the basis of the quantity of the commodities so on the basis of the quantity of the commodities we can classify the market as a two types first one is wholesale market and the retail market so wholesale market is a market where the bulk selling and buying of goods will be there so if any of the wholesaler are going to purchase from the producers or any retailer are going to purchase any of bulk amount of the commodities from the seller or the wholesaler is considered as a wholesale market so the price is likely to be low compared to the retail market so when we are purchasing any of the commodities in this wholesale market so the price of the commodities may be very low so next to retail market so the retail market is for selling or buying of commodities in small quantities if any of the retailer are going to sell the commodities within the small quantities to the consumers it is called retail market so when we are comparing to the price of that commodity will be very higher than the wholesale market so on the basis of quantity we can classify the market as a two types wholesale market and retail market next on the basis of competitions now the competition is very much important to construct the or efficient the market so first one is the perfect competitions market so the perfect competitions market mean so it is on the basis of the competitions are the same type of the commodities so in this perfect competitions the large number of buyers and sellers will be there and every seller will be selling the homogeneous product and if any of the persons can easily come and go and the absence of transport costs will be there so normally the perfect competitions prevails when the demand for the output of each producer is perfectly elastic normally if the product if any of the product has more demand or highly demanded so the perfect competition market will be appear automatically so mostly on the time of festival so the perfect competitions will be appear wherever they want to be so next the imperfect competitions market so imperfect competitions market means so not only on the festival time or the seasonable time so the imperfect competitions also will be in the market 
So the imperfect competition market always classified are the four types. First one is monopoly market. So monopoly market means the mono means single, poly means seller. The single seller only will be there. The single seller only will be there. Next to monopolistic market. The monopolistic market mean so the monopolistic same level only. So different type of only a single line of the product only will be going to sell by the producers. So monopoly means the only one seller will be there, but the, he, he can be able to produce or more commodities. Monopolistic means a yes, single line of product only will be produced and will be going to sell. Next duopoly. Duopoly means so two sellers will be there. Two sellers will be there. Next oligopoly. Oligopoly means the single sellers will be there. Single sellers will be selling different type of the commodities are the same type of the commodities. Next, the firm and industries. So, when we are going to study the market structure, before that we have to consider the meaning of firm and industries. So, a firm refers to a single production unit in an industry. So, producing a large or a small quantum of a commodity or a services and selling it a price in the market. Its main objective is to earn a profit. So, there may be other objectives as described by the managerial and behavioral theories of the firm. So, if you are considering the firm, so single are the single unit of a industry, a single production unit of the industries. For example, if any of the cement factories are there in LA or any of the district, we can see as a firm. Next to the industries. So an industry serves to a group of firms producing the same product or services in an economy. For example, a group of firm producing cement is called a cement industry. If any of the company only is producing cement, that is called the firm. The Sangar cement is there. The Sangar cement company only is considered as a firm, the cement firm. And the industries, the whole all over the Tamil Nadu or all over the India, how many cement companies are there? The firm, every firm is also considered as a industry. So next, equilibrium conditions of a firm. So equilibrium conditions, already we have studied the equilibrium conditions. The equilibrium of the firm means that the firm reaches the maximum profit. So all the producers want to get the maximum profit. So when your producers are being in a maximum profit, we can say the producers are being in the equilibrium or the firms are being in the equilibrium. Now there are two approaches are there to calculating the maximum profit. First one is total curve approach. Total curve approach means the cost curve and the revenue curve. The total cost curve and the total revenue curve. So when we are considering the total cost curve and the total revenue curve, we can Calculate the measuring of the, we can measuring the profit. So first the total curve approach. So in this total curve approach, profit is obtained by a firm through the difference between the total cost and the total revenue. So here the two type of the curves are going. So first one of the curve is starting from the Origin that is called the total revenue and one of the curve is starting by the distance from the origin it is considered as a total cost curve. So here what is the or uh, in which ratio the difference are there between the total cost and the total revenue we can consider the profit. So the equilibrium is obtained at the point where maximum difference between the TC and TR occurs. So here the two type of the cost curves are moving from these two origins. 
but where the maximum difference are there between the total cost and the total revenue at point is considered as a equilibrium point or the maximum profit level so here the difference the total curve is going from here and the total curve is going from here so here in the point of n the company will be in the equilibrium because the most expected gap is there in this point of n and e okay so for the cost to producing some unit of commodity the functions the firm have to be spend 45 units or the 45 rupees just simply if we want to still say and after that so the total revenue is going to increase from the 45 to 75 so but the total cost is just 45 only but the total revenue is 75 so where the gap between are there from the 45 to 75 75 the 35 rupees or the 35 percentage are increased from the point n to point e so the between gap from the n to e of the tc and tr is considered as a equilibrium conditions are the maximum profit level this tc tr method is not generally adapted in the calculation of maximum profit hence to calculate profit or loss some of the economists advised the mcmr approach mcmr approach mean mass marginal cost and marginal revenue approach now here we understand so within the first output when they are using the one unit of output by using some of the cost so after that within the point 5 so after this the second unit and third and fourth unit also the equilibrium or the cost or the producers will have the possibilities to get the profit but where they are going to maximum profit means in the point of e in the point of e mean when he is going to 50 unit but in these two two four also he is will be in the equilibrium or will be in the profit but in the pro in the point of output the point of unit five he will be earning more profit because the gap between the tc and the tr is very much on the point n to e only so the producers or the firm will be in the maximum profit on the particular line so after that particular line if the producers want to increase the product so the total revenue will be decreased okay so it will be come to one decrease till he can be able to increase the point eight so after the point eight if he is continues their production the total revenue will come to an end or it will be reduced so next the marginal curve approach marginal cost approach so in this approach the following conditions are the two conditions are to be verified to obtain equilibrium of your firm so when we are studying the profit when we are calculating the profit of the firm by using the marginal curve approach the two types of the conditions are to be verified so what are the conditions means first the mc is equal to mr mc is equal to mr means the marginal cost so the cost must be equal to the revenue so the marginal cost is equal to marginal revenue marginal revenue means so we are mistaking so the additional last unit of revenue so when we are adding up the input on the basis of last input how much amount of output that is the revenue is coming that is that called marginal revenue so here we have to consider the two conditions first one is the ar sorry the M, mc is equal to mr so this is the cost curve the mc is must be equal to the mr so here in this two point the a and b in this a and b also in this point a and b always is equal to the mr so in this two point mc will be equal to the mr 
so when we are following the hypothetical situation so normally a rational seller will not be in equilibrium at output level 1 see here the when they are going to the when the producers are producing the one unit of output he will be in equilibrium equilibrium means he will get some of the profit okay but as a rational consumer as rational producers will never stop the output level within the point one itself so through mc is equal mr at the point here this line is considered as the marginal revenue curve okay so here the marginal revenue curve and the marginal cost curve always will be equal only but even though he will get some of the profit he will never stop at the point so his profit increases so when he produces an output beyond one unit till the reaches five units so the marginal revenues are going to increase so marginal revenues are going to decrease at first after that it will be increase okay so he will be increase the production level till the point five so the advantages for the producers to continue his production again he will not be in equilibrium beyond five units of q when his marginal cost will be increased so the marginal cost has to be decreased and the marginal revenues will be increased okay so even the, within the low marginal cost if he is get the maximum profit but whenever the cost is going to decrease the marginal revenues also will be the equal okay but within the low cost low cost of production the producers can be able to get some of the revenue but after this point unit if he want to increase the production the marginal cost will be increase okay it will be never equal to the revenue but the loss will be appear so from this every point the loss will be increase so if he is increasing the fifth unit the loss will be increase so like that whenever he is going to increase the production level beyond the fifth unit the cost will be increase again but at the last level point b if he is increased the production he will get the loss only so next so the mc cuts mr curve from the below so the marginal cost is equal to marginal revenue is the sufficient level or not the sufficient level it is the necessary level okay the so see the marginal cost and the marginal revenue is also will be the same so if it is equal to the, the if the marginal revenue is equal to the marginal cost only he will get some the little bit of the profit so it is the necessary things but it is not a sufficient conditions as the producers always want to earning the more profit so another one of the conditions also have to be happens that what the conditions mean the marginal cost curve cuts the marginal revenue curve from the below see this marginal cost curve is going to cut from below so marginal cost curve cuts the marginal revenue curve from the below so what's the meaning is that means so the marginal cost is always reached so the marginal cost is decreased and it is going to increase upon the particular time so a firm under imperfect competitions focus declining price line so the marginal cost is u shaped and it cuts mr and two points both from above and both from below so the marginal cost curve this is the marginal cost curve this curve is cuts above from the mc curve and it will be cuts the mr curve from below so in this first cut the mc cuts cut above the the first cuts the mc is cuts above from from above and it is cuts from below so first cut from above 
is not a necessary point. So it is the necessary point. It will be started. This is meant to be the starting point. After that, the marginal cost curve is cuts the MR curve from below is fulfilled at the point P. So the maximum equilibrium level is going to fulfill. So when we are considering the MC curves or the mar uh, marginal curves accrued, we can calculate the profit. Okay, student, I think it is enough. If you have any doubt, please ask me. Thank you.